we bless your holy name. Thank you for the blood that washed away our sins. Thank you for the blood that opened the door to the holiest for each and every one of us. Thank you because since our sins are gone, our prayers can now be answered without hindrance. Thank you for the victory over Satan that is in the blood of the Lamb. And thank you, Lord, for making us your disciples. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for these wonderful children of yours. Thank you for those who have made up their minds that they are going to follow you regimentally, irrespective of whatever others might be doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Tonight, speak to your children. Bless them mightily. And make them true disciples. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let your amen be loud. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, somebody said, if God prepares a table before you in the presence of your friends, it will be wrong for you to refuse to sit down. So uh, I think I will take that advice. He has prepared a table before me in the presence of my friends. You are my friends, all right? Let me hear somebody shout hallelujah. I'm going to be brief. Because uh, after the Holy Communion service of tonight, the devil knows he's already in trouble. But he's going to get into bigger trouble now. If you believe that, let me hear you shout Amen. Colossians chapter 2, from verse 9 to 10. Colossians 2, 9 to 10. For in him, as in Jesus Christ, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. When we talk about influence, when we say a man is a man of influence, we mean that he has, as it were, a master key that can open any door. And I'll give you an illustration quickly. I've told you before, at least some of you have heard me say so before. A particular president who was about to be sworn into office. And uh, they give they give uh, cards to people because after the inauguration there will be after the inauguration there will be a dinner and so I was waiting in my room and 
one great man of God came in he had a card on the card was written in bold print letter A so he was glad ah look at my card I have a letter A card because there are there will be letter E D C B now he has letter A that shows he must be a big man but soon I mean soon after that another great man of God came in daddy I have an invitation to the program and on my card is letter AA ah. that means this man can go to places where the man with letter A cannot enter and of course the man with letter A his face fell and soon another man came daddy I have an invitation to the program and on my card letter A A A that means when it is time for dining after the program the man with letter A can only go as far as a particular place the one with AA can go further in and further in means <laughs> things are going to get better there the one with letter AAA ah, as a big man but finally they, they say wait a minute oh. daddy what is on your own invitation card because you have been just smiling at us oh, hey congratulations I said I don't need an invitation card all I need to do is show up and the door will open they call that thing influence Our captain, the Lord Jesus Christ, has influence in heaven, he has influence on earth, he has influence underneath the earth. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2, from verse 9 to 11. Philippians 2. 9 to 11 at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven things on earth and things underneath the earth through him because you are his disciple you have influence in heaven Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13 to 14 Hebrews 1 13 to 14 tells me that as a disciple of Jesus Christ you have control over angels angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to those of us who are years of salvation that is why you can command your angels to go and deal with anyone who might think of disturbing the atmosphere around you 
Witches and wizards say they fly at night. Some of them, at least in the olden days, fly during the day. But you probably have had all manners of testimonies of them flying over a church where the power of God is and they drop down. I'm sure some of you, at least the older ones, will remember the testimony of a man who fell in front of a church of God. He was, he was flying to a meeting. And he went into the church and got born again. That's one of the reasons why I said we need to wake up. Our churches should be so hot that even if witches try to fly near, the fire of God will bring them down. In such churches, when they pray, their amen is enough to tell the demons, don't go near. As I was sharing with some, some of our pastors not too long ago, my first day in the redeemed Christian Church of God, everything was going fine. I liked their choruses, they were singing, even though I didn't know the wordings, but I liked it. Until they said it is time to pray. And the man to lead the prayer said, in the name of Jesus. The man I was sitting next to said, Amen, so loudly, I nearly ran out of the church. Now they had to beg us. Including disciples. Either to say amen or to shout hallelujah. They were began to hear. I began to hear things like I began to hear things like your amen is now born again. Your hallelujah is standing on one leg. That's admission of failure. At the name of Jesus, how many knees were to put to bow? Let me hear somebody shout Jesus. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 11 Matthew 11 verse 11 The Bible tells us That the greatest man in the Old Testament Was John the Baptist But that is less than the, the smallest of us in the kingdom of God. That those of us who are born again, we are greater than the greatest of the Old Testament saints. Meaning what? It means we are greater than Joshua. You and I, we are greater than Joshua. And Joshua stopped the sun. In Joshua chapter 10, from verse 12 to 14, he stopped the sun from setting. And we are greater than he. And we've had testimonies from some of my children 
Who traveled with me? You have share one with you. I will share it again. Because we have to wake up. We have Jesus. We have the name that's above every other name. Therefore, we have influence in the heavens. I was invited to come and preach in Denver, Colorado. That's in America. Those of you who know any geography at all, you know that that place is very cold in winter. And then I was invited to, uh, to come and preach. It was a very important Pentecostal gathering. Father, should I go? He said, yes. But Lord, that place is winter. It's cold. And I don't like cold. I told my father, you have to do something about it. And he did. For all the days I was there in January in Denver, Colorado, people were wearing t shirt We are greater than John uh, to, than Joshua. And you know what? I left the place at five PM. My plane took off at 5 p.m. Before 7 p.m., several centimeters of snow fell. Meaning what? God suspended the snow for as long as I was there. in the heavens that may in any way interfere with your success I want you to decree that because of my influence in the heavens you get out of my way You are a disciple of Jesus Christ. You have the master key that can open or shut the heavens. I've told you before of a man who came to worship at the Butemeta. And after some time we didn't see the wife. So the both of them were coming. And when we follow up, the woman said, Since I started coming to your church, I could no longer fly at night. True stories. So where is the fire? I told you of a convention. When some people came for the convention, and after some time, they, 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 they had a woman shouting, Mama Lagbaja, Mama Lagbaja. Yes, what are you doing outside the gate? Uh, help me bring my bag. Uh, why? She said, I'm going home. Uh, if you are going home, come and collect your bag yourself. He said, I can't come in. Why not? He said, There is fire there. True stories. Where is the fire in the churches where you disciples are? That's the question. Only you should be enough to keep your churches aflame. Next Sunday, by next Sunday, Set your church on fire again. Do I hear your amen? (laughs) 
You know, nowadays, if somebody, if, if the preacher is praying, and one fellow shouts amen the way he should be shouted, people will be looking at him as if he's doing the abnormal. We are, that is the normal. God will set you on fire. Your fire will set your church on fire. That will be for the one who says amen. Because Jesus has influence in heaven. And on earth, you is disciple. You have influence on earth. When we talk about influential people on earth, you don't have to be president to be influential. With somebody more influential than the president. I've told you the story before when I was treating Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91 verse 1. And I told you the story of some boys who were playing at the state house. One, the son of the president. One, the son of a medical doctor. One, the son of a herbalist. And one, the son of Jesus. And the first one said, my father is the greatest. And they said, why? He said, because my father is the, uh, what do you call him, head of state. And the second said, no, my father is greater than your father. He said, why? He said, because my father is your father's physician. If he tells your father to stay in bed for one week, your father must obey. So the doctor is more influential than the head of state. Well, you know this. Okay, I'll tell you the rest of the story in case you have never heard it before. The third one said, no, my father is greater than your father's. Why? Because my father is... Um, which doctor of your fathers? He can kill your father without using cutlass. And the fourth one, who happens to be the son of the messenger, said, But my father is the greatest of all. And they said, ah, Your father who is the messenger? He said, You don't know my father. My father can raise the dead. <laughs> who is your father? He said, Jesus. Let me hear somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. But the doctor is an influential man. People say that sooner or later you will need the doctor. If you don't need him when you are born, you may need him when you are sick. If you are never sick, you will need him when you are dead. He has to sign your death certificate before they can bury you. But we, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, are more influential than any doctor. Why? Doctors can fail. There are sickness and diseases that doctors cannot handle. And yet, our commander-in-chief said, We shall lay hands on the sick. And what will happen to them? Uh, Say it as if you know it now. (laughs) 
You know, we disciples are living below our position. When we started the school of disciples, way back in 1985, every one of us was challenged to go and lay hands on the sick. Go lay hands. And I taught you then, those of you who were there at the beginning, what if I lay hands on them and they die? Lay hands on the second one. Lay hands on the third. Lay hands. Keep laying hands. He didn't say, you shall lay hands on the sick and you shall cure them. He said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He meant, if you lay hands on the sick, I will lay my hand on your hand. The sick will feel your hand, but the power will be my power. That's why he said, in my name. I taught us. That the time is coming when they bring somebody to the church and they say, We want to see the pastor. You say, What's the problem? And they tell you, they say, You don't need to bother the pastor about that. Bring the fellow. <laughs> they bring somebody into the church and they say, The fellow is dead. How long has he been dead? Oh, only since yesterday. Oh, don't bother my pastor with that. I'm here. Now, how many of you believe that I'm talking about you? How many of you believe that from now on that will be happening through you? If you believe that, let your amen be loud and clear. Some of you are now behaving as if oh, we are tired. Don't you know, sir? This is after 10. School of disciples. We go on break around 11.30 at night to go and eat a bar. After that, we begin uh, uh, a little bit of practical. We never finished before 2 a.m. to go and rest a little before we wake up early in the morning and begin again. I'm not even sure whether this accelerated something, something was for our good at the end of the day. We come, we walk, we study, we eat, and get back interaction we are supposed to be commandos for Jesus Christ not ordinary soldiers and in the name that's above every other name before next year the school of disciples will be what it's supposed to be You are supposed to succeed where doctors cannot. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. Acts chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. There was no doctor who could cure the man who was born lame at the beautiful gate. And the disciples were passing by and they saw him there. They asked for money. The disciple does not have to be the richest man in the town. If you have the power to make the lame to walk, even the rich people will come and bow at your door.
And the school of disciples was started because of a time like this. We were very small then. And I prophesied to the, the disciples then. I told them a time is coming. We will hold a crusade. And we will need 36 hours to cancel the, the, the converts. So I told the disciples, you, are, you better be strong. You better be ready for action. Because we will be so busy casting out demons, healing the sick among the new converts. Now I want to assure you that time is near. I'm not sure this is this uh, few hours of uh, of uh, I don't know. I've begged disciples who will be able to handle that matter. But there's at least one of you listening to me now before the end of July. If they bring the dead to your doorstep, the dead will rise. Peter raised that man. We grabbed him by the grabbed him by the hand. And the Bible said the ankle bone receives and that something flowed from Peter into that man. Something flowed. And that thing that flowed into that man is supposed to be in you. You have been baptized with the Holy Spirit and with power. You may not know it, there is a current flowing in you. And I mean it. I'm not joking. You've let it have to sleep. That's why it's not acting. My wife went to buy a piece of cloth somewhere in London years ago. And is it the type of uh, cloth that they have to use scissors to cut uh, a bit of it? And there was this white man who was holding the other end of the dress while mommy was using scissors to cut. By the time the scissors touched that man. He dropped everything. Because an electricity passed through that scissors and hit him hard. I say power flowing in you. He didn't say this and shall follow the wife of the general overseer. He didn't say this and shall follow the continental overseer. He didn't say this sign shall follow only the pastors. This sign shall follow them that believe. If you are a believer, I've told you before, Amen says, I believe it, so shall it be. You will raise the dead. You open blind eyes. One of my children was talking in America not too long ago. He was giving a little talk on teenagers. How we should wake up when we are dealing with them. He He said if we are not serious, we will lose our teenagers. And he said, the reason is this. These little ones are looking for evidence. What are they looking for? Uh, he said, don't tell them that Jesus can heal if you are not ready to demonstrate. Don't tell them that Jesus can open blind. That they say, show us, show us. 
Shoes. Because they are not they are not young anymore. When you hear questions from ten year olds, you wake up. And it's all going to start with you, the disciples. That's why God raised you up for a time like this. To show the world that Jesus is still on his throne. That he's alive and well. And that I'm his disciple. I am his disciple. How many disciples of Jesus are here? He has influence in heaven. He has influence on earth. And then he has influence underneath the earth. At the name of Jesus, all nations should bow. Things in heaven, things on earth, things underneath the earth. He gave you power to cast out demons. Mark chapter 16 verse 17. Mark 16 verse 17. Not to be afraid of demons. But to cast them out. And I taught you in the school of disciples, to cast out means to pick up and throw out by force. You're not to beg demons. You're not to be afraid of them. Ah. When I got born again, and I learned all these things, my very early days and I was talking like this and one elderly pastor came to me and said take it easy small boy take it easy you are young I said what what are you saying he said there are witches and wizards around I said before I was born again for 13 years I was running from witches and wizards in my village. Now I found Jesus Christ. You want me to be running again? No more. Now when I want to go home, I announce. So that the witches and wizards better run and go and hide. And it's, it didn't say these signs are follow general overseers. In my name, if you believe, you will cast out demons. How many of you will begin to cast out demons? Let me hear you shout hallelujah. Don't say it unless you mean it. And what kind of life are we going to live as Christians? Afraid of wishes and wizards of all of all things. They are under our feet. In Acts chapter thirteen, from verse five to twelve, Acts thirteen, five to twelve. Paul was preaching to a governor, a sorcerer, well advertised sorcerer, well known, was hindering him. He, he didn't say, uh, uh, Oh, God, sorcerer, uh, please now, and uh, uh, leave me alone now. No, he moved him out of the way. By the time you get home, 
first thing I want you to do is command every demon in your house, every demon in your compound, every demon in your place of office to get out. I told you the story of one of my sons. Not a member of the church, but you know, used to be my student at the University of Lagos. He was living in the same house as a famous abalist. Very famous abalist. Soldiers, senior police officers, they all come to him for charms. And my son came to me and said, this Havalis is uh, living in the same house with me. I rented the house and he's there. I said, in your house, you are in the same house with a Havalis? I said, yes, um, you know. You are living in a house and the Havalis finds it Convenient to, to stay there. What are we talking about? Go and move that mountain out of your house. He said, ah, <laughs> I just told you now, it's not disturbing me. Okay. Oh. Then after some time, I didn't see my son for a while. By the time I saw him, Oh, all his uh, hands up, up the, full of mosquito bites. What happened? The, my son called a prayer meeting in his room, and the harbor listened uh, to the senior police officers coming to him that he suspects that my son is an arm robber and they are holding a meeting. Because they have been feeling a little bit of the impact of the prayer. But, you know, he prays the kind of prayer you pray. Uh, Almighty God, thank you for today. Good night. See you tomorrow. So they arrested my boy. Threw him into detention. Mosquito dealt with him. So when finally they looked at him and they found that this man can't be, <laughs> he's always praying, this man can't be an arm robber. They released him. Then he came to me and told me, I said, hi, when you refuse to move the mountain, the mountain will move you. And then he went back and prayed the kind of prayer he should have prayed and chased out the abalist. Before Sunday. Before when? Every plan that my God has not planted in your house must be rooted up. We are complete in Him. We have the master key to the universe. We have influence in the heavenlies. And if there's any wish here, listen to me, listen carefully. From tonight onward, you won't fly again. <laughs> we have power on earth. We have influence on earth. We have influence on earth in the earth. Unless we don't have faith. Because the Lord Jesus Christ said in John 14 verse 12, John 14 verse 12, the works that I did you will do also, and greater works than this shall you do. Is the Lord a liar? Answer my question. The one whose name is the truth. Will he say something that is not true? Unless we fail to pray, 
Because in John chapter 14 verse 14, John 14 verse 14 says, If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's what he said. Or oh, we have not been meeting his conditions. John 15 verse 16. John 15 verse 16. You've not chosen me, but I've chosen you that you should go and bring forth fruit and make sure your fruit abide. That anything you ask, the Father in my name, he may do it to you. Are we just disciples by name? Or we decide, are we disciples? Winning souls, planting churches so they can be established. Or maybe, and this might really be, maybe we have not sought the help of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 from verse 26 to 27 Romans 8 26 to 27 So we don't even know how to pray as we ought to But he said the Holy Spirit is ready to help our infirmities He's ready He's ready to pray with groanings that cannot be uttered. And he tells us that there is somebody who knows what is in the mind of God concerning us. That's the Holy Spirit. Maybe we have not asked him to help. That's going to change now. That's going to change now. Somebody asked me. We know you pray long. I said, yes, I do. By his grace. And well, after you have asked for this and asked for that, what else do you do? Well, I spend a lot of time praising God. And after you are praising Him, uh, don't you get tired? Or what do you do when you suddenly feel you need help? There may be the situation you are facing is a little more than you can cope with. I switch over to the tongues. When you are praying in tongues, you, you can pray for 10 hours non-stop. I know there are some people who say when they are praying in tongues, they, after a while they keep on repeating the same thing again and again. Well, half bread is better than nothing. But if you learn to pray in tongues regularly, you will soon discover that the language of today is different from that of tomorrow. Ah, you will soon discover that today, you, if, if you listen carefully to what you are saying, today you might be speaking something that sounds like Chinese. Tomorrow it may sound like Arabic. Next time it may sound like uh, <laughs> like my mother original Yoruba, which is not exactly the same like my own. Tonight, if you want your fire back, you want to be a real disciple. Stand on your feet and shout hallelujah. You know one thing. 
about God. And that is he deals with individuals. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever is talking to Wama. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hears my voice. We are many here tonight. Thank God for that. Thank God for the parade. Thank God for all the additional steps. But this matter, when it comes to where the rubber meets the road, is between you and God alone. You might think everybody heard what I say. You may be surprised. Some people may not have heard anything. There might be one or two people here hungry, hungry for God. One or two people who may feel that, oh God, before the sun rises tomorrow, I want to be a burning flame of fire for you. This may be only one fellow, might not be all of us. So when we are going to cry to God tonight, it is going to be a question of me and God. Not just the crowd. When we finish praying here and everybody is going home to sleep, there will be some people who will keep running forever. Some people here, they are not going to sleep until the sun rises because they are going to hold on to God and say, God, I don't want what I've had tonight to be just a lecture. I want it to be a destiny changer. So I am going to give you some time. I know your leaders will come to round up the program for the for the night. But after they've done their own, after the ceremony is over for tonight, I beg you in the name that's above every other name. Tonight should be a night that should change your life forever. Yeah. So lift your hand to the most high God and cry to him from the bottom of your heart. And say, Father, I am your disciple. You promised me that greater works than you did I will do and I'm completing you fulfill your promise go ahead cry unto the almighty God father you can't lie it's not possible for you to lie I'm your disciple you say I will do greater work than you did Set me on fire, Lord. Revive me. Fulfill your promise. Do it tonight, Daddy. Tonight. Before the sun rises.